Hi friends, now in the DAMS Medicine Unplugged series, we try to give you the clinical perspective of the disease and how you know the patient actually presents and how it really looks like on a uh, lab image. Today I have selected a classic thread. Now reason I am saying it's a classic thread is that whatever exam you may appear for, you might be appearing for your licensing exam in India, you might be appearing for a USMLE exam or you might be doing a preparation for the uh, next exam, NEET, PG, AIMS. This is always, always asked. So I thought why not touch upon something which is always, always asked. Let's see the question and let's try to understand the threat. This is a 48 year old man who is HIV positive with history of seizures for last 3-4 months. History of seizures, neurological complaint, HIV positive, 48 year old. You know this, for an HIV patient, immunocompromised patient, we are thinking of things like opportunistic infections. And you have seizures and MRI brain is done here. MRI of the brain is the standard of care for brain infections as well. So we have to keep it in mind, if I'm looking for a tumor, space occupying lesion in the brain or any infection, MRI is today the key to imaging, not CT scan. The role of CT scan is primarily restricted to things like acute brain hemorrhage, head injuries and to look for calcification. Let's look at the MRI image. This is a T2 weighted MRI image. You can see a T2 hyper intense lesion which has a hypo intense rim around it. So it is a bright lesion with a dark rim around it with surrounding edema. This entire white thing that you see surrounding it is edema in the basal ganglia area here. And you also see similar lesions in the in the cortex, in the occipital lobe, in the typically in that grey white matter dif differentiation, you see that high point dense rim, uh, bright lesion with surrounding edema. That's all vasogenic edema that you see surrounding it. This is a flare image. Flare image is done. It is nothing but a T2 weighted image with dark CSF. If you notice now, you can see the CSF is dark, but the brain parenchyma has characteristics that you see in a routine T2 weighted image. The grey white matter differentiation you can notice. The grey white matter is more bright as compared to the white matter. This is a flare image. Again in the flare image you can delineate the same lesion here. You have that ring lesion with surrounding edema in the basal ganglia area, grey white matter junctions. You can see multifocal lesions. What would you do here? We need to give contrast. When we give IV contrast which is gadolinium that we use in MR imaging, that Contrast cannot cross the blood-brain barrier, but any place where you have inflammation, because of the inflammation leading to those leaky capillaries, the contrast would leak into that parenchyma and you see enhancement. So enhancement that we see in a brain lesion would indicate two things. It would indicate the vascularity as well as the disruption of blood-brain barrier. Both of them would typically be seen in an inflammatory lesion. Let's try to confirm it using contrast. So when you give IV contrast, all those areas where we saw that edema, this dark area surrounding it still, it is edema. This is a T1 post gadolinium image where you can see those lesions showing that ring enhancement and that ring of enhancement actually depicts that zone of hypremia and the inflammatory area where you have the disruption of the blood brain barrier telling you that you're looking at ring enhancing lesion, multifocal in the basal ganglia, gray white matter face area. But not only do you see that ring enhancing lesion, you see some eccentric target like appearance or we can say a P in a pod like appearance. These are the findings that we have seen so far in the image and do not forget the patient was HIV positive, immunocompromised. What do you think? So this is classic appearance of toxoplasmosis. We saw that multifocal lesions in the basal ganglia, gray white matter junction area. This is summarizing the finding for you. And the contrast enhanced image shows that eccentric enhancement, a nodule within it, which is called as the pain pod or the eccentric target appearance. Very typical in this patient with the history of immunocompromise. This finding is very typical of CNS toxoplasmosis. Now, this is what the radiology of the case is showing you. But I want you to understand in today's scenario, when you are appearing for a licensing exam across the world, or uh, exam which we are, we, are, we are competing for residency spots or for PG or MD spots in India, the idea has to be integration. So from here onwards, they can go into different directions. 
they might ask you something about the microbiology of toxoplasma or they might ask you something about pharmacology about the drug of choice how would you manage the patient the the email the question might go in any direction from here onwards and that is where i believe radiology today is much more important in these scenario of integrated questions than you believe otherwise because it is not the radiology that they want to ask they want to ask you radiology is a part of the workup the image is there you just need to look at the image and you know go to the next step but if i don't know how to look at the image like we saw that this is a contrast enhanced image showing you the ring lesions with the centric target flare image t2 weighted image but if you're not comfortable with the radiology imaging you will you know find yourself struggling at that initial point which is the the fulcrum at which the mcq stands that is where i believe radiology today stands more into the clinical domain and that is the today's role of a doc radiologist in clinical practice is also very similar so i hope you enjoyed this episode of unplugged do follow us on siri channel on youtube for more such informative videos and do scroll back to the channel to listen to previous videos in the string you will enjoy the unplugged series i'm telling you i wish you all all the best